you for coming to the first session of this year's uh, State of the Map. Super delighted to be here. It's nice to see a bunch of friends in the audience. It's nice to see a couple of statements here. Um, we're doing a number of presentations during the event, so I'll talk about those a little bit. But what I want to talk about is um, what we've been doing um, at Stamen for the last 12 years vis-a-vis -vis OpenStreetMap. We're a, a service business that uses OpenStreetMap in about half of the projects that we do. Um, and we build tools that let people use OpenStreetMap in a variety of ways, and we also um, improve accessibility to the OpenStreetMap data set for our clients and then also for some uh, commercial collaborators. So what I want to do is go through a couple of those uh, uh, examples of those projects, just talk about how we, we work with, with clients and then also with um, with, uh, with other data sets that go into uh, to OpenStreetMap and then conclude with some thoughts about the future. Um, we've been doing this since 2009. Um, some of the early work that we did in this regard um, was with these three guys. Uh, Tom Carden, who was part of the project from the beginning, Mike McGursky, who's, whose butt that is, and um, uh, Sean Allen, uh, pointing at um, one of the early uh, uses of, of, uh, of this data. This is the, the piece that um, Tom Carden and um, Steve Coast did with tracking uh, motorcycle guys driving around London. Um, we did about 40 projects last year. Half of them used OSM in some form or another. So um, the work that the um, contributors to OpenStreetMap does directly impacts um, the business that I'm able to do and the, the 401k plans of all of our employees. So thank you very much. Um, these are some early projects with uh, CloudMade, um, some of the earliest uh, commercial designs using OpenStreetMap. Um, this one sort of being designed to compete directly with Google Maps at the time. This one to be more about the canals than about the, uh, uh, the roads. Um, and then this one to start to play a little bit with Jason Bourne type stuff. And just to, to kind of, uh, you know, early on kind of get a sense that you could explode stuff on top of this stuff, not just necessarily find your way from one place to the other. Um, we started doing some work with Wyden and Kennedy and Nike Grid. This was a game in the UK that used the phone boxes of the uh, London, uh, the iconic red phone boxes as uh, goalposts in uh, foot races. So you'd run from spot to spot. Um, the idea that, that the branding of that kind of thing could be directly indicated on a map um, was a one-way street in the sense that you know they came up with the branding and we applied it to the map. Um, but this idea of kind of taking that um, relationship between the map and the cartography and the branding and pulling all all together is just something that we we uh, think about a lot and are often asked to do. Uh, more recently, we've been doing some work with MapZen. Um, Randy Meach is going to be speaking a little later on today. I encourage you to go see his um, his presentation. Um, it's cartography that we. Uh, we're working on, have been working on with, um, with our team uh, to try to uh, give them a data set that's, uh, to give them a, 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 excuse me, sorry, to give them some cartography that works really well with their brand um, and to start to help them in their uh, remit of building a business that's entirely based on open source software. Um, you can hear more about that a little bit later on. Um, but these styles that we've been designing for them, uh, this is a uh, mostly the work of, uh, of Kate and Seth. Um, it's some of the first work that we've done um, with a mobile first strategy. So this is, the stuff is all designed um, you know, in, a, in a way that, that, that addresses that. Uh, really basic stuff like you have to make sure that the labels don't repeat as much as they do in other forms. Um, something that we've been super excited about with this one is that we were asked not just to design the cartography but also to design the branding for the project. Um, and so the POIs um, and all that um, plays well into the brand um, and into the, the kind of overall messaging of the project and we think that's a good thing. Um, that people like Randy are, are kind of spearheading this idea that you would not just take a brand and try to apply it to an OpenStreetMap project but that you'd take the OpenStreetMap and the branding and have those things connect and be done by the same, by the same people. Um, so he'll be talking about that and some other things today at 4 o'clock. I encourage you to go take a look. Um, We've also been working with Pinterest and Mapbox. Um, this is a design we came out with a little bit earlier this year. Um, designed not so much to get from one place to the other, but to place things on top of. Um, so, you know, here's my map of flowers and plants and gardens. Um, again, by our um, cartography team of uh, Kate and Seth. Um, one of the things that we tried to get to here was not to have a map that was uh, so kind of clean and crisp and clinical, but we started to do things like introduce small variances all the way through it. Um, places like this, it's uh, very subtly changed so that each one of the labels is slightly off so that it's not exactly at a 90 degree angle. 
um, introduced by taking the OSM ID and running it through some, I think Seth would call it a hash, but it's something complicated that he divides by three and he gets a, a, number, of, a number that's very small and he does those kinds of adjustments. So trying to make maps that have a bit of a human feel to them so that it's not about um, just a kind of clean and crisp and kind of worldwide dominating kind of thing, but something that feels local um, wherever you are. Seth is going to talk about this and some other projects a little bit later also. Um, it's been super fun to think on a kind of global level with this kind of work. I mean, all, most of the maps that we do um, have a kind of, uh, you know, uh, they're designed to, to, to have an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly global reach. Uh, and uh, so, you know, for us to, to do things like provide maps of the whole world um, for free um, is a kind of important part of the, of the process. This is work that got funded via the night. Oh, hi. <laughs> I have a two-year-old son at home that I miss um, a lot, so that was really nice. Um, so these are some, sort of one of the, the, the really fun and aspirational things about doing this work is that you can literally cover um, the entire world. Um, and for the last two years or so, we've been uh, doing just that and helping others to do that with a tile set that we make free and freely available for um, used by the public. So um, this is maps.statement.com. It's, um, it's got three styles, toner, uh, terrain, um, which was headed up by my former statement colleague, Mike Magursky. Um, it's got different layers, so you can start to use things uh, like, like different parts of it, so just the bottom if you like. Um, we kind of went to town with a map style called watercolor that you may have seen. It's um, uh, a sort of attempt to show that there's a left field, just to kind of throw it out there. Um, and again, you know, this blanketing of the whole world is a, is a super fun thing to do because you can just point it at places like London, um, New York, uh, and Paris, and get um, really different, uh, uh, really different effects, um, and then start to layer it in with other things. Um, we served 250 million tiles in March 2014. Seth tells me um, it's totally free, and there's no sign up, and there's no API. There's nothing. You don't have to do anything. You can just take the tiles and use them. Um, and again, this was funded by the Night News Challenge. We hope to work with them again some more. Um, and from a business perspective, this project is not so much a, a money maker for us. You know, we don't, we, we, it charges, we, you know, we, we, we do it for free and we pay um, for the hosting and for the maintenance and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as using OpenStreetMap for business and as far as opening up doors to do OpenStreetMap related work with others, it's, it kind of can't beat it. Um, We've been using it in some other contexts um, as well. This is a, a, a map that was, a watercolor map that was turned into a billboard on the corner of 14th and Valencia in San Francisco. Um, that's kind of our team. Um, it's the biggest picture of the attribution that I've seen in the world yet. Um, and, um, you know, this idea that, that the, the that CC by SA, whether it's right or not, gets out into the physical world is, is one that we that we think about um, quite a bit. Um, and as I say, it's been fun to think about these kind of global data sets, these, these gigantic um, uses of OpenStreetMap. We've also um, started to make much more local projects um, using OpenStreetMap, among other data sets. This is a uh, map that we finished uh, a couple months ago for the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy. It's the nonprofit group that rides alongside the Golden Gate National Recreational Area. Um, and it's their remit to, among other things, get people to the parks and let them know what's inside of it. So this is a custom base layer um, designed with OpenStreetMap and Park Service um, and Google and a number of other base layers together um, that they're using as part of their uh, effort to get people to the parks. Um, I can never resist talking about these guys. These are overlook icons, um, and we spent a lot of time and energy and money making sure that they were correct, which is to say you can know that you can look that way, and th that one looks that way, and that one looks that way. Um, this is the kind of thing that things like Google Street, uh, like that um, you know, Google Maps Maker and those kinds of things uh, make pretty difficult. The cartography is really custom designed to be about the parks and not about the roads. Um, so you can see that you know the, the primary um, features there are um, are park related, and that the smaller pieces are are pulled back. Bathrooms are super important. Again, with the overlooks, I just love that. 
Um, and you know, the neighborhoods are just, who cares, right? Because you're in the park, you don't care about this. So this, this, this notion that you can kind of, that, that maps have not just, uh, it's not just about picking which labels go on and which labels go off, but it's about coming to it less as a kind of technical project and more of a design project is something that um, OSM has really let us, let us do um, and has also sort of en enabled us to start to build tools on top of. Things like, uh, so the, the different kind of data sets that go into this are things like venues from the park service. Um, OSM is the foundation for the transportation network, most of the place names, um, and then the secondary green areas. We got the USGS uh, data in there for terrain. Um, coastlines come from the National Hydrology data set. So, you know, there's, there's blog posts about this. We call this the baking of a many layered data cake um, that OSM um, really straight, uh, is, is the foundation for. Uh, and then uh, these detailed labels from the Park Service. Uh, it all comes together in something that looks like this, um, and they're using it for their for their for their whole uh, application. Um, it looks really different from what they would have gotten if they had used Google. It's, One more uh, application of this data is a project called Surging Seas. Um, we're currently working on this for California. Um, the project's designed to show the effects of sea level rise in the United States. Uh, as I'm stepping through this, um, I'm, we've got OpenStreetMap data overlaid over climate modeling data that we get from our, um, our clients at, uh, at Climate Central. Uh, and we've got six feet, seven feet, eight feet, nine feet and 10 feet. And if you notice places in here, we're being pretty subtle and we hope sneaky with the, with the cartography and the typography. You know, the label that's underneath the water is blue and the label that's above the water is black. And we really wanted to focus not on the kind of shrinking coastline, but on an expanding ocean. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where, we, where, where that got turned around. Um, points of interest are included inside of here. Social vulnerability is included. Uh, and then population density. So you can start to see that uh, over on the Lower East Side, uh, there's tons of people who are uh, very, really, really socially vulnerable and that there's lots of them. Um, if you look at New Jersey, uh, very, very low social vulnerability in yellow, right where my mouse is, um, but a ton of them except in places where they aren't. So it's a way to start to use um, this data to have conversations that are, that are very um, nuanced about the effects of climate change and sea level rise. Here we've got uh, the rockerways and a similar type of thing. Now, this, this all sounds kind of dramatic, um, this 10-foot level of sea level rise, but um, Sandy raised the sea level by 13 feet in that storm surge. So it's not just about sea level rising, but it's about being more prepared. Um, and then I want to talk just briefly about some physical objects that um, are being used, uh, made using OSM. Um, Dodo Case is using OpenStreetMap maps um, as the inside of their customized uh, iPad cases. Um, they just sell a shitload of these things. It's really great. We're expanding to London. Um, we've got it now for uh, UK, oh, sorry, for um, San Francisco, LA, and New York, and it's being moved over into um, uh, Paris, DC, uh, Berlin, and London, and a couple of others. Um, and so again, the license, you know, CC by, et cetera, is, um, is getting out into the physical world as well. And the message I want to send you about this stuff is that OSM has matured enough to a point where we don't just have to think about slippy maps and, and, uh, and vector tiles and all those kinds of things. We can also start to think about um, projects like this, which is uh, Stephen, he's here. Um, he's uh, started making these last week. He sold a bunch of them in Austin already. Um, he's basically taking, uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, but he's basically taking MapStack, which um, lets you do things like uh, easily layer watercolor for the waters, um, terrain labels for the labels, and toner for the, uh, for the, for the streets, um, and taking that and essentially turning that into furniture that he's selling to his friends, which is just totally awesome. Wait, he's selling the couches or the prints? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, wall furniture. I'll sell, it's, I don't know, I'll sell you a couch, I guess, if you want. Um, and then uh, a project I've talked about before, Soft Cities, which my wife Nikki is doing. These are blankets um, that are built using OpenStreetMap software. Um, ways of making the thing very, very custom and, and very personal. Uh, my Admin Gavin has an OpenStreetMap tattoo of San Francisco on his leg. 
and he gets it extended. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. Um, so uh, I want to just briefly touch on this idea of the license, um, which is to say that we don't really care about it. Um, it doesn't really matter for my purposes. I, um, so long as I can keep using OpenStreetMap data and keep contributing to it and, and keep um, essentially selling it, um, uh, it doesn't really matter to us. Um, we're we're psyched that people are having a conversation about it, but you know what we're what we're mainly saying is that uh, for a business, um, we don't really care what what the, what winds up happening, um, so long as we can continue to use it. And and I I want to um, just kind of mention that some of our clients do care about the license, and, and I think what you might be surprised. Um, to hear is that some of our clients uh, care about it to the sense that it's a uh, it's a it's a value add to their business. Um, this is a quote which I won't read from um, my client at the Parks Conservancy, Michael Norelli. Um, for us, the fact that we were, or for him, the fact that we were using OpenStreetMap data instead of Esri data, um, and we're going to open source the whole project by the time it was over, was I think one of the main reasons that we got that contract. Um, and we're seeing that. Um, especially with public agencies, they'll, they'll go for vendors that use open data and open street map over places with proprietary uh, software. Um, and that's super awesome, um, you know, to be able to go in and say, you know, we'll, the, the reason that, that, that you should go with us is because we're using open street map data, not the other way around. Um, so just to, to, to try and turn the conversation from a you know uh, business versus open into a you know businesses uh, finding ways to not just contribute to it from the from the data side, but also contribute to it from a, a kind of a, a business perspective in the sense that they will favor vendors um, that use it. Um, and I think that's something that we might have a productive conversation about about you know doing things like certifying whether a project is OpenStreetMap uh, uh, validated or not. Um, but you know, just to, to bring you the perspective that um, for most of our clients, OpenStreetMap is a value add um, rather than a central tenant of their business. Um, you know, places like MapZen are you know basing their whole businesses around it. Places like the Parks Conservancy, it's not that they don't care, but it just makes their business a little bit better because they get to, in public, say that they're contributing to the ecosystem of, of their local area. Um, and then just to give you the message that using OpenStreetMap is aspirational, we were talking about this a bunch at the studio. When you, when you, when you use it as a business, um, you use it uh, because you know that you can add to it and modify it, not because it's the most perfect data set in, wor in the world. But I, I think that's just a thing to kind of consider as the OpenStreetMap community, which we think of ourselves as part of, engages with businesses to sort of let them know that you know, if they want to play and do new exciting things, they should use OpenStreetMap. I've got a few other things to tell you about um, in ways that we're trying to contribute as a business to OpenStreetMap. We run a shop called MapTime. Um, it is uh, a weekly get-together of map nerds um, and other map people that um, we are teaching how to use um, uh, open map tools. So we're doing tile mill lessons. We've got um, OpenStreetMap uh, hackathons. Um, we do this once a week. It's sprouted at Stamen. Um, and it's starting to pick up some steam. So there's a chapter in Portland, St. John's, New York, and Cleveland. Um, there's one that's starting up in Maine and, and in Oakland. Um, and we've got, um, you know, essentially it's a bunch of people getting together, talking about maps and learning about OpenStreetMap and learning about mapping tools. Um, we do them once a week. That's uh, Alan and Beth over there on the right. Um, and we are uh, essentially teaching people how to use OpenStreetMap. There's a lot of interest in this, and I just want to kind of bring that to you from a, from a business perspective. There's a, I have a vested interest as a business in teaching people about OpenStreetMap. It brings people to my shop. It lets me talk to lots of different people. That's an awesome thing. More than want to come, or the other way around, like we, we sell out routinely. It's 30 a week, usually. Um, and if I had more room, I'd do more. But my shop is only so big. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but if that's uh, if it's 30 people at each of those, it's probably 200 people a week. We invite lecturers, we invite stars, that kind of stuff. If you're interested in um, in talking at one of them, um, please consider yourself invited to San Francisco for pizza and beer. Um, and we're doing one uh, here uh, at uh, on Saturday at 5 p.m. There's a lightning talk, and on Sunday at 4, there's a birds of a feather conversation about teaching people to to use OpenStreetMap. You can meet the people to do it. Um, I want to bring you this, this, just pers this perspective that contribution to OpenStreetMap is, is about more than um, uh, adding streets in your house. Um, it's about money, um, and it's about exposure, and it's about paying it forward, and things like education, um, and about making it available to lots of different people. Um, 
I'd love to talk about that if anybody um, has some thoughts. And I want to end with a project that um, we're working on now that is using OpenStreetMap. And I can't um, tell you what it, what it is, but um, I can show you some fun pictures. Um, we're using OpenStreetMap to generate stuff that we think is pretty wild. Um, these are, um, well, I can't tell you what it is. It's super annoying. But, um, but Seth, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, there's San Francisco. We're starting to use advanced Carta CSS techniques and really trying to um, to play in this space. Um, to make you know, there's an explosion of maps happening in the world, um, but we haven't yet seen things that use triangles to indicate relative densities of things. Can you tell us what it's not? No. <laughs> What's it like having NSA as a client? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, ask ask Seth. <laughs> I, I actually um, I forgot to register for the draft, so I can't actually work on federal projects myself. Um, if that's any indication of, of what it's not. Um, Can you do that in jail? Or not? No. Uh, so that's what I will leave you with. Um, there's advanced card of CSS tricks uh, happening uh, a little bit later on t uh, this weekend, uh, and Seth Fitzsimmons is going to be talking about running your own infrastructure so that. Um, the infrastructure that's being used to underlie all this stuff gets uh, more widely distributed. Uh, that's what I've got. Thanks very much. Thanks for, for coming. Thanks.